they should meet us fighting. You have to know the psychology of political transformation in Cameroon. A French pilot has already published that he was witness to the burning down of whole villages in Bamliki land as in Basal land. That shock into those cultural groups has emptied every energy or thought of them standing up for their political rights. And this is what they cannot take from us and they have been trying to take from us. We meet Max Bardet in a remote village in southwest France. This former French soldier was sent to Cameroon between 1962 and 1964 in the Bamileke region. He was a helicopter pilot and witnessed several massacres committed by the Cameroonian army. It was strongly supported and funded by France. The army targeted members of the UPC, a party that opposed President Amadou Aïdjo. The UPC believed that after independence in 1960, Aïdjo was simply France's hand-picked puppet. For the first time on television, Max Bardet describes the atrocities he saw. They had to finish the men off, but not the women. They just let them die like that. They shot the women with Kalashnikovs and also cut off their breasts and disemboweled them. During these massacres, Max Bardet was accompanied by a French officer. The officer who was with me did not want anyone to be able to say that France was involved in this whole thing because there were still French soldiers there at the time. A new book on this topic called The War in Cameroon has just come out. The French were very discreet. They planned the operations but didn't have a heavy presence on the ground. They repressed the UPC movement but also all the civilians suspected of supporting the UPC. So it was a discreet, secretive repression. In France, no one knew about these military operations. Discreet, but extremely violent. In Cameroon, some still remember the massacres of the 1950s and 60s. Tade Yemelong used to be the bodyguard of one of the UPC's leaders. It was a devastating war. They bombed places and didn't care if women or children lived there. Tade Yemelong fought for many years in the Bamileke region against the French and Cameroonian armies. He was badly wounded. I fell in a hole after we were ambushed. Then I went to hospital. Now some Cameroonian NGOs want to ask for reparations from France for its role in this war. A discreet one, but one in which tens of thousands of people were killed, according to French and Cameroonian historians. French soldiers are still in Cameroon today, performing the same role, fronted by the same locals they put in charge, in a government whose average age is above 65 years old. The motto of operation remains the same, cause the worst atrocities on the whole population and lie about it. Ladies and gentlemen, the National Defense and Security Forces have once again been subjected to second guessing and false allegations in their struggle for a return to normalcy in the northwest and southwest regions of our country. Indeed, images of unbearable cruelty circulated in social media on Saturday, February 15, 2020, showing charred bodies while indicating that this was only a reflection of a massacre of the people perpetrated the day before in Garbu village, Ndu subdivision, in the Dongamantum division of the Northwest region. Without any prior investigation or any cross-checking of factual data, several political activists, die-hard detractors, presenting themselves as human rights specialists, leaders of spokespersons of political parties, 
immediately stormed national and international media to attribute responsibility for the consequences of this incident to the national defense and security forces through untimely and ungrounded statements. Moreover, the Minister Delegate at the Presidency in charge of defense in a press release dated 17 February 2020 formally denied these outrageous and misleading allegations and established the truth of the facts as they emerge from a cross-check undertaken with promptness and diligence by the specialized services. The alleged killing of 22 villagers, including 14 children, by Cameroonian defense and security forces in Galbu is fake. This issue is about human lives, the lives of our fellow countrymen who are daily under threat from lawless armed gangs, which our defense forces present in the northwest and southwest regions have the essential mission to secure and protect. The government, through my voice, and following this denial, intends to clarify the situations as follows. For several months now, the National Defense and Security Forces have succeeded in taking control of and securing the Stumbo Road Junction, the flow pathway for all the illicit traffic that floods the Bui Division in the Northwest region, particularly the subdivisional towns of Elak, Oku, Jakiri, Kumbo, Mbiam, Kum, and Kor. The armed gangs that were wreaking havoc in this area, sowing terror and despair among the population, took refuge in a peripheral hamlet called Garbu to set up their rear base there and reorganize the racketeering of users while perpetrating unspeakable abuses on the road leading to Ntumbo. Alerted by the population, the defense and security forces then deployed to Ngadbu in a reconnaissance operation on Saturday, February 15, 2020. In the heat of the action, and not far from the landmark chosen by the secessionist rebels as a logistical base for the storage of illicit goods, arms, and ammunition of various calibers, as well as adulterated contraband products, narcotics, and amulets, elements of our defense forces were violently attacked by a group of heavily armed individuals. The legal forces, consisting of six elite elements, responded vigorously and professionally, neutralizing several assailants and routing other individuals from the armed secessionist group. During the clashes that took place, a fire broke out in a fortified shelter that contained explosives and flammable materials stored by the armed rebels. This led to blast, followed by tongues of fire that eventually spread and reached nearby dwellings. As indicated by the Minister Delegate at the Presidency in charge of defense in his communique, the cross-tracking balance sheet of this incident indicates five deaths, one woman and four children. Deeply regretting this unfortunate incident in a region where 
The Cameroon Union Army is working tirelessly and without sparing any effort to bring peace and security. I wish to convey to the people, and particularly to the families affected, the most heartfelt condolences of the President of the Republic, His Excellency Paul Biya, and the comfort of the government. In any event, and on the very high instructions of the President of the Republic, an investigation was immediately opened with a view to further clarify all aspects of this incident. Beyond the ungrounded stigmatization and slander directed against our defense and security forces, we should underscore and magnify the remarkable virtues that characterize our army, an elite army that is strong, credible, professional, and mature, and whose daily activity builds on the sacrosanct principles of respect for Republican institutions, and the defense of the nation with honor and loyalty. We should indicate that in their legal and legitimate mission, and at the price of immeasurable sacrifices, our defense and security forces are at work to annihilate the remarkable dynamic established in the Northwest and Southwest regions by the secessionist armed bands. I mean terror, horror, and abomination, in short. They do so with the restraint prescribed by the high command and in strict compliance with the fundamental principles of humanitarian law focused on the protection of vulnerable people, that is women, children, the elderly, and the disabled. The government uh, has uh, committed uh, summary executions. Uh, they are guilty of uh, detaining uh, people and not allowing them access uh, to lawyers, to their families, uh, even to visits from the Red Cross. Uh, they have been uh, guilty of burning villages and looting uh, and, uh, and of general harassment of the population. The same people uh, using the same tactics are right now in Ambazonia committing genocide. They go into communities and they pit one community against another. And, uh, and look at what this, look at, and it's shown on this video. Yes, why do you vex? What happening? Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. In Wom, in the northwest region, the military manipulates the Muslim community, provides them with protection, stage video and all, to go and murder the non-Muslim population as they stand by and watch. Ça c'est le courrier de la communauté Bororo qui ont décidé en découdre avec les Zamba Boy. Ils sont insaisissables, insaisissables. Nous avons fait ce que nous avons pu faire, mais là ils se dispersent dans toute la ville, mettent le feu, brûlent, cassent. Voilà, voilà. Et ce qui nous reste à faire maintenant, c'est aider les blessés les brûlés que nous conduisons à l'hôpital. Nous sauvons ce que nous pouvons sauver. Voilà la situation actuelle. On essaye vraiment de faire ce que nous pouvons faire pour nous imposer, interposer à ces actions-là. Vous avez, ce n'est pas évident, ils sont dans tous les états avec des machettes et des gourdins. Donc voilà, ils sont comme ça, c'est des dizaines des dizaines de groupes dans toute la ville. C'est la fureur de la communauté Mbororo qui vient de mettre le feu sur ce père. 
Nous sommes arrivés avec beaucoup de retard, nous n'avons pas pu intervenir à temps. Il a été brûlé, comme vous l'aurez. Mettez la main sur la carrosserie là. Ça se dégrade ici. Hein. There's another fact that people should really know, and that fact is that after that Rwandan genocide, most of the, the, the perpetrators of that genocide, most of the perpetrators of that genocide ended in La Republique du Cameroon. And here's an, uh, an article, this one was written um, by the Immigration and Re uh, Refugee Board of Canada. It says, according to a 21 April 1999 Associated Press article, Scores of Rwandan Hutu politicians and leaders sought refuge in Cameroon after Tutsi rebels won power in July of 1994. See, the government of La Republique is installed, is trained and installed by the French. The troops are trained by the French and they use the same tactics in this genocide. And so in, in Rwanda, they pit the Hutus against the Tutsis. In La Republic to Cameroon right now, they've trained troops which are sent to Ambazonia. They're not only killing the uh, Ambazonians directly, they also, these troops are then going in and they've been trained to do that. Because I cannot see how else the, similar, the similarities are so clear in Ambazonia as they were in, in, in Rwanda. In countries like that genocide it's not so important so basically he's saying that in countries like Rwanda Ambazonia genocide is not so important and so that is what is happening in Ambazonia and the world continues to watch for how long are we going to wait before we stop another genocide in Africa or do we agree with the late president Mitterrand that in places like that, genocide really doesn't matter. It should equally be emphasized that in fulfilling their regalian mission, the Cameroonian defense and security forces are called upon to pursue armed groups in their entrenchments, located in the forest and sometimes in the homes of populations. Moreover, it should be noted that in their criminal operations against the populations who don't support their cause and against our defense and security forces, armed gangs use cover-up techniques aimed at creating confusions among these populations and the general public by wearing military uniforms so as to impersonate the Cameroonian armies. Yet, how can one believe for a moment that an army as disciplined and civic-minded as ours can loot civilian properties and kill the people whose protection and security is their mission? <laughs> I don't 
Now Jews are as up, they own the machine of all. No man of the own law. If therefore, look at the cartoon, you see the owner is a cartoon, you think that owner, that owner is from the owner part. The way the phone did yeah. nothing ever knows that they that. See, it go now from moto to moto. They go from one moto to another. How did you open the moto? This is this is this is really tough. Oh, simple man, this the bone from that place for that salon now. See, Jesus, no, no, I tell her it's all this way. The bone are all simple. Yeah. Hi. Baby, it's not me. Oh, boy. Oh, this simple man is tough. Oh, Jesus Christ. No, that's... That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. This simple man is tough. Oh, that's what I'm saying. Master. I wait until the end and move to them. Chop the fan, go to the man, go chop that fish, all to a pot. Chop flop, then burn the place, go there. Then they talk to you, go, 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 My living Jesus, see now my descent makes me own store this. See, he bikes every day and starts. Hi. Hi. Under no circumstances have our defense and security forces deliberately undertaken to perpetrate abuses of any kind against the civilian population at the service of whom they are assigned. I put the pass in the corner, I just ignore them. The first one I first, normally you more fear. Normally. I was going by and they would call me and I ignore them. They threatened me and so I was afraid. So I went across and met them and they sent me to their supervisor. I went and met them and the other one said I should go and meet their patron. I went and met the patron and he asked me where's my ID card. I told him that I had no ID card. Then he asked me how old I was. I said I was 17. He asked me what I'm doing for a living right, right now. I said I'm not doing anything. So he asked me, I'm walking on the street without an ID card, and I said yes. Then the other one came, and the patron asked me to follow him. I knew that I was begging him, and he said I shouldn't try because I, I did not send them here. Then the other one dragged me and, and took me to a place in the, in, the, in the petrol station and said this is where people who don't have ID cards stand. Did you see anybody there? No, there was nobody there. So he took you in there and what happened? When I went in there, he told me to, to, to undress. I told him that I was a nursing mother. He said I shouldn't try and, and bully him here. I said, I'm not bullying you, please. I'm not. So he kicked me and then, and then hauled me up and asked me to stand. He took off my clothes and raped me. So he removed her clothes and raped you. Yes. Yes. That man may have infected me with disease. The senior divisional officer for Manu communicates for the attention of the populations resident in the undermentioned villages Akwaya subdivision, Bodam, Dadi, Kesham, Baji, Abonado, Beteme, Ebinsi, and Bakem villages in a Mojok subdivision O2, Sanaragati, Sanakang, Agbokem German, Ndwap, and Esagem in Mamfe subdivision, Egbeko village to relocate to safer neighborhoods of their choices 
in the hours that follow, failure of which they will be treated as accomplices or perpetrators of ongoing criminal occurrences registered on security and defense forces. The government therefore strongly denies the fanciful and ungrounded accusations leveled by political activists, by sponsors of secessionist armed bands, by some non-governmental organizations and some national and international media against our defense and security forces. In the same way, it is surprising how gullible these various actors are to the extent that they give oh, credit up, up. to fanciful allegations from nondescript oh. and unreliable sources and hastily consider them as established truth. This obviously is an indication of their bad faith and their gullible minds which are permanently working to manipulate the public opinion. The Cameroonian government strongly condemns these machinations aimed at damaging the image of Cameroon and systematically ruining the reputation of our institutions and our army at the very moment when the 9 February 2020 twin legislative and municipal elections have just been successfully, transparently, and fairly carried out throughout the national territory. The government therefore appeals to the responsibility and solidarity of all the friendly countries that continue to harbor all those who perpetrate such acts of violence and barbarism in the northwest and southwest regions and who keep spreading untruth about the real situation in these regions and throughout the national territory. The Cameroonian government specifically calls on the international community to be vigilant with regard to the flow of fake news hurtfully disseminated on traditional mass media and online in order to undermine Cameroon's image. Finally, with regard to the crisis in the Northwest and Southwest regions, it should be emphasized that the situation is gradually improving, thanks to the quick implementation by the Head of State of the recommendations of the major national dialogue, especially with the fast tracking of the decentralization process and the granting of a special status to these two regions. In addition, faithful to his commitment to peace, the President of the Republic once again urged his young compatriots in the Northwest and Southwest who have allowed themselves to be lured into armed gangs and who continue to maintain a climate of insecurity in these two regions to lay down their weapons, like many who have already done so and who are living peacefully in our communities. It goes without saying that the effective commitment and involvement of these repentant sons and daughters of the Northwest and Southwest are instrumental in the process to restore peace, security, and social cohesion in the said regions and consequently on the national territory. The efforts undertaken and the measures taken by the head of state were generally welcomed and praised by all our fellow citizens and partners of good will and good faith. The signs are perceptible, and the visible facts are instilling a little more optimism every day. Therefore, the government of the Republic, through my voice, launches a vibrant appeal to all, 
so that everything possible may be done. Not to stir up tensions, as some do, but to unfailingly support every effort that can contribute to a return to peace, to normalcy, and the consolidation of living together in the Northwest and Southwest regions. Thank you for your kind attention. Why? Then just shoot any man. All land is shoot all my house. Why? All, all thing, all my house. Why? Uh, my pillar. Why? I see He's got all the house. All. These people are some bad luck people, eh? my brother. He got for dance house. He shoot all the dance house. Thank uh you. -huh.